Hey there, first thing we're going to talk about today is how to go about the planning phase uh, when deciding to what you're going to do your research on and how you would like to conduct your research. The most important part of really a good research experiment is setting that experiment up. Okay, if you don't set the experiment up in the correct way, you're not going to be able to have an accurate and miserable so the objective for this lesson uh, is to be able to understand the aspects of research methods and then go about how to actually go ahead and select one of these research methods. A couple definitions you need to understand though to start off, which, which really are the three basic types of research design, or research design. The first one's going to be qualitative, and qualitative research design is when you explore and understand the meaning of social and human problems. So problems that individuals develop together. Uh, one example of this could be why do humans refuse to sit next to each other on an empty bus? Okay, so take that hypothetical example where you walk onto a bus and there's one other person sitting on that bus and why do you not go sit next to that one other person? You usually tend to sit far away, okay? That could be something you'd look at through a qualitative because there's no real data numbers to drive kind of what you're doing on that one. Compared to quantitative, which is where you're going to test objective theories um, by examining the relationships of various so, for example, you could do something like, does uh, music help a plant grow? Um, you can take the theory that, yes, music helps plants grow and examine that by a number of different variables. So you take a plant, you put it in the same conditions, um, then you test it compared to a plant that's growing without music playing, then a plant that is growing with music playing. Uh, and then the mixed methods is really going to be a combination of the qualitative and quantitative. Okay, so you're going to take some of the qualitative, you're understanding the meaning of social and human problems, and the quantitative where you're testing these objective theories, and you're kind of combining them together uh, to really go and understand and design a better more. Now, once you get those basic definitions out of the way, you need to select a research method for your particular research for the project or just your life in general. Um, in order to do that correctly, you need to understand the following. We're going to talk about these a little bit individually. First and foremost, you need to understand your worldview. So what is the view that you um, there's four we're going to talk about in depth. So what is your worldview? What strategies of inquiry do you have when it comes to inquiring the information that you need to know? Um, what is your research method? Are you objective or are you subjective? What is the problem that you are researching? How do your past experiences influence that? And what is the audience that you're trying to reach through your research? And how is that going to come together and influence this? Okay, so you're going to throw this all together. Then you're going to know kind of what you are as a researcher, how you go about and do your research. So in order to understand that, we're going to look at these all a little bit more in depth. The first world we were going to talk about is the post-positive world. Most positive worldview is this traditional form of research. Um, this is the one that's going to use that scientific method where you genuinely want to identify um, causes that influence the outcome. For example, why is the sky blue? Okay, you're going to look and try to figure out the cause of the sky being blue. It's usually going to be quantitative where there's actual data um, and experiments that you can measure and prove that. Uh, reductionist is going to be the idea that you reduce the ideas into small sets of ideas to test. Um, it's easier to work on a number of small tests than it is to work on one really large test with a number of variables. So you're going to be reductionist and trying to basically make it as simple as possible um, and expand to a bunch of little small experiments versus one large experiment. Uh, there are laws or theories that govern the world and these need to be tested in order to verify them so you can understand the world. If you don't go out and do that, you're not going to be able to understand the world under this post-positive worldview. Research is a process of making claims and then testing those claims and refining them. Um, so this is basically, I'm going to say, for example, the sky is blue because of so much water on the earth. Now I'm going to find a way to try to prove that. That evidence isn't necessarily going to be perfect um, and absolute, so truth cannot necessarily be found. However, you can come to a large conclusion that most likely this is going to be the reason for that. Additionally, it's important to understand that in a post-positive worldview, being objective is essential. You must be objective or you cannot be successful with a post-positive worldview. The next one is a social constructivist worldview. This is where individuals seek understanding of the world in which they live or work and so develop subjective meanings to their experiences. Those meanings are complex, uh, so we need to understand them all and not merely put them into categories. So understand each and every experience you've had in your life and how that impacts really your view of the world and how you go about doing stuff. Meanings are developed through their interactions with others. So it's how you interact with one another, um, historically speaking, cultural norms, okay, 
what these different things do. For example, someone who lives in a tribal village um, in the middle of South America where they don't have access to technology, different clothing, different language, um, than someone who's living in, let's say, Switzerland, and they're going to have a different way of kind of operating and thinking. They're going to have a different um, norms for their lives. For example, the sky is blue, but why is the sky blue? Okay, again, figuring this out more. The goal of the social construct of this worldview is to rely on the participants' views of the situation and the meanings they express. You're going to ask open-ended questions and explain the process of how they got the answer. You're not so concerned with what the answer is, but how they went about and gained that answer of understanding. You must recognize, though, that your own lives are going to shape your interpretation. Some of the biases you might have about your life are going to shape their interpretation. So, for example, if you're talking to someone who's going to use a myth based off of religion, okay, and it might seem kind of out there to you based off of your worldview, um, but you need to understand that just because it seems crazy to you, it doesn't seem crazy to them, and understand how that's going to influence that. You're going to then develop a theory out of questions. Uh, the social constructivist worldview is the exact opposite of the post-positivism worldview discussed on the previous slide. An example of this is going to be anthropology, where you go out and simply observe a group of people and understand why they act the way they do. Advocacy and participatory worldview is the next one we're going to talk about. Um, this is when the inner or research process is intertwined with politics slash a political agenda. So this comes with an action agenda for reforms. You're trying to change something um, that may actually change the participants, the institutions that people work with or live, and or the lives of the researcher. They're going to be addressing social issues. Okay. So empowerment, how do I empower young people to stand up for what they believe in? How do I um, address inequality, oppression, domination, okay, these different things? How do I go to do this? Um, and the aim of this is to create debate on the topic, to create awareness, people are aware of the issues, and to create change in society. Um, participation, okay, participants are going to help design the question. They're going to reap the rewards of the research. So if you're a participant in adv advocacy worldview um, type of experiment, the benefit from this experiment is going to go and it's going to help you. It gives the participants a voice in the process um, and they truly feel like they are a part of the process. One example of this could be research on migrants. We're going to be talking about migrants and why they are choosing to leave one country and go to another and actually help them um, help them out in the process. Finally, we're going to talk about the pragmatic worldview, not a focus on methods so much, um, but on the research problem. And we're going to use all approaches necessary using a freedom of choice if we're going to use a pragmatic worldview. During this uh, type of worldview, using this type of worldview, truth is what works at the time. So if it's effective for you at this time period, that is going to be the truth you use. Um, you're going to look to the what and how of research to try to find the intended consequences that you are looking for. Uh, one example of this is a biography of Donald Trump, um, a man who's been known to simply say whatever he wants to say because it's politically expedient at that time period. It helps him politically, therefore it is going to be truth. Okay, again, this map right here, this little chart, diagrams of four different types of worldviews. Uh, so you can go ahead and look this over, study this. You're going to be able to understand kind of the four different worldviews all lined up against one another, and how they're similar, how they're different. Go ahead and look for some of the similarities between these worldviews. Look for how they are different as well. That is the four worldviews we're talking about in research methods today. Have a great day. Ask me any comments you might have and post down below.